were you at the uh, Trees Club show in Dallas? I was at the Trees show in Dallas. One, I mean, for those of you who don't know, this was the infamous show where Kurt got into the fight with the bouncer. Now, going yeah. into that show, this was, I think it was October of 91, Memory Serves. Yeah. Um, this, so this was like a month after Nevermind was released. Another one of those shows uh-huh. where it was jam-packed uh, with people. Yeah. And um, I mean, wild stuff, constant stage divers, things like that. What What do you remember about, you know, the, uh, some of that show before the incident? I have memories of what that club looked like. I remember the street and I remember what it looked like when we pulled up to load in. Um, kind of the stage, there was a big like roll up door that opened right onto the street. So you could load right off the street into the stage. Um there were some pretty helpful guys there to help us load in. Everybody's in a good mood, um, including that particular bouncer. Wow. who was one of the loading guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, we went in, we did our sound check. It was a little bit of a difficult sound check because the stage is pretty small and the monitors, uh, it was really hard to get the monitors loud enough for Kurt mm-hmm. and for his vocals, uh, partly be- because they weren't that great, and partly because the stage is so small and it was the band was playing too loud, and uh, you know the, all the whole sound system was was you know adequate at best. So where were you, you know, most of that show? During the show, I was out at the uh, the front of house, like sound mixing right. booth, which was kind of. In this case, it was clear at the other end of the room, kind of under a stairway, it feels like, maybe up on a little riser. Mm-hmm. You know, fairly typical for a club. It was a pretty big club, I think, maybe. I don't remember what it held at the time, but, you know, maybe four or 600 people. Yeah. Once everybody was in there, there was really no way for me to get to the stage quickly at all. We had our people on the stage. Right. So a monitor, a monitor engineer and a stage tech. Yeah, and it was jam packed, sold out, uh, totally sold out, nuts. And, yeah, and, and uh, if, if you watch the performance of people listening, um, I mean, the, the stage divers just constantly falling onto the stage, pretty much just uh, one after the yeah. next. And uh, Cobain even started seeming to get a little frustrated at times. You know, I mean, mostly just because his microphone would get knocked over, things like that. Right. But, um, it was. Um, yeah, the band usually took that better than I did. Uh, <laughs> you know, they they didn't mind having some stage diving going on. They didn't mind people coming on stage and stuff. I would always get frustrated because, yeah, they would knock his microphone over in the middle of a song. They would step on his guitar pedals and make his guitar uh, cut out. Mm-hmm. Um, at a different show, I would get over... I would talk on my talk back mic and ask the security, could you please keep the people off stage? It's ruining every song. Wow. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, you got, you got to correct that stuff as it's going on well, live. I want to hear the music, you know, that's what I'm motivated by. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, yeah, so the show was pretty chaotic and, uh, but my memories are, are fairly vague, but, uh, like Kurt was not happy about the sound and he was not happy about the sound of the monitors. And I guess it looks like he was also not happy about, you know, the amount of people getting on stage and messing things up. Yeah. And, uh, so I do remember this somehow though, like all the frustration got the best of him and he, uh, took his guitar and walked over to the side of the stage and started smashing the monitor board. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I do remember that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It, it's in the footage, if you guys haven't seen it. He starts smashing yeah. the monitor board. And um, now, I, I mean, I've heard from different sources. I don't know if that uh, that bouncer, who uh, we're coming up on here in the story, um, had anything to do with that, uh, that soundboard. Do you know about that at all? Well, so the owner of that sound equipment was some, you know, he's, part of the trees family they all know him so they're all friends and so they're understandably upset when Kurt goes over there and smashes the monitor board um so and i'm a little fuzzy on the order that all of this happened in 
Yeah, that happened uh, uh, probably, I'd say, midway through the set, and then they continued to do a, you know, a few songs so, before the incident. So what I think happened is when he smashed the monitor board, uh, we had to stop the show, take the band off the stage, while our crew and their crew tried to figure out if we could continue the show, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think we had to take a break while they fixed some things, found the remaining channels in the monitor board that still worked, and then brought the band back on. Wow. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I think yeah. happened. Was anybody so, g- giving a shit to Cobain about that at all? Like, you know, what are you doing? Well, well, he was... So my recoll- what I remember is that I think that he and the band were back in the dressing room, or at least he and the tour manager, but I wasn't. I, was, I stayed yeah. where I was at front of house, basically because I was stuck there. It was so crowded. Right, right. So they bring the band back out. You know, the trees staff are all still really angry at the band. Mm-hmm. And uh, But anyway, we, the show, you know, resumes. They play some songs. It's still chaos, you know, and Kurt liked the crowd surf while he was playing. It was, he did it all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. So what I think I saw here is that the guy who had lo- helped us load in was now one of the front of stage security. Right. It, it started off where, uh, you know, they had some front of stage security, just like one one guy up there trying to keep all these stage divers. But as the show progressed, yeah. there was so much chaos going on and so many kids falling on the stage that this guy uh-huh. then joined this other guy. So, you know, he was one of the two two guys, you know, trying to keep the kids off the stage at, the, at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. What I thought I saw happen was I saw Kurt, like, jump out onto the crowd, the crowd surf like laying on his back while he's playing his guitar. And I saw this guy very clearly. I saw him under the guise of like trying to pull Kurt back on the stage. But I also saw him like cheap shotting, punching Kurt. Right. And then Kurt had his guitar. So he kind of tried to use his guitar as a shield and ward this guy off from punching him. Yeah. And... I mean, Kurt might have also been sort of aggressively poking him with the guitar or whatever. So the, like the bottom of the guitar body hit the bouncer in the head and he started bleeding. Yeah. And when he started bleeding, that just said, well, also hitting, getting hit in the head can also just send you into a momentary blind rage, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that and the sight of his own blood just turned this guy into a raging bull. Like it was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) And so then suddenly, you know, there's chaos, a big fight. Um, Well, I don't know. It wasn't, it didn't turn into a big fight with like people actually trading, you know, blows. But uh, anyway, yeah, they got off the stage. They all went back and got locked in the dressing room. And And I, so I was, yeah, go ahead. I was still stuck at my position. I couldn't really get out and do anything. I was just sitting there going, "Oh my gosh, here we go." <laughs> and uh yeah, so. I, I mean, uh <laughs> so so yeah, he jumped in the crowd. It was during the song Love Buzz. If you guys want to see it, it's all over YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Um he jumps in the crowd. The guy starts uh pulling on Kurt's hair. I, I mean, so so we we we're under the assumption that this guy is already pissed off at Cobain, maybe about the, yeah. the whole monitor board, and and then as soon as he sees Cobain kind of falling on him, he starts jabbing at him, like you said, and pulling his hair and stuff. And but I guess he didn't he didn't anticipate Cobain smashing him in the head with the guitar <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. But I guess anytime you're getting attacked, you're going to do what Kurt did. I mean, I think what Kurt uh-huh. did was totally appropriate. Yeah. I mean, he was. He was, you know, <laughs> he was being attacked. He had to defend himself. Absolutely, right. But the rest of us on the crew, you know, we had to pack up the band's gear and load it in the van. We had to pay for the monitor board that we broke. We took it with us. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so Monty, the tour manager in the band, left for the hotel in a cab. And that bouncer chased after them and punched out a window in the cab. Wow. <laughs> He was still there waiting for us and being restrained from uh, from getting that Kurt again. Wow! So nobody called the police and told them to like escort this guy out of here. He was just kind of pushed out of the club, but still waiting outside. There was no like, to your knowledge anyway, no uh, police 
called or anything. Uh, I am. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that he was still waiting and he actually punched a window. So, were you with the band in the ta- in the cab when this happened, or? No, I wasn't. I was with the crew with the van and trailer and the band's gear. Did Did you see it happen, or did they tell you afterwards? I heard about it afterwards. Wow. And did, what did Kurt? I mean, was Kurt like, uh, you know, couldn't believe uh, this guy, or what was his reaction? <laughs> uh, well. I mean, these guys were not afraid of a little scrap, you know? It was just like, uh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) 